Welcome everyone, a virtual welcome to the Courtauld Institute. Um, I take it that you are here because you're interested in hearing more about the MA Curating the Art Museum program, uh, which uh, we have here. Uh, to introduce myself, my name's Martin Cager Smith. I'm professor here at the Courtauld Institute, and I have been uh, running the curating program since it began in 2007, so that's 15 years. Uh, my background before then was in the museum and gallery sector. I worked in a variety of roles there. And prior to that, I was, uh, in fact, a Courtauld alumnus myself. Um, I think probably the first thing I should say is that um, this, the Courtauld MA is a, a separate program within the Courtauld Institute, separate from the Art History MA. Um, there may be many of you who are also interested in hearing more about the, the History of Art MA itself. Um, so I just wanted to clarify to you that the two programs are separate and they have totally separate admissions procedures. You are perfectly at, at liberty to, uh, to apply for both of those programs. And um, there's no prejudice to that. That's absolutely fine. You can declare that on your application forms. And it's something we take into account only when we have made our decisions on both sides, on the history of art side and the curating side. So, as I say, um, I had the exhibition, uh, I, I had the curating program. Um, the, the curating program is taught by me and colleagues here at the Institute in the history faculty, but also more broadly in the conservation department and the gallery, the gallery curatorial team. Uh, we're joined also by its associate, uh, associate lecturers from outside, and there's input significant input too from professionals within the museum and gallery sector as well as from artists on this program you you meet a lot of people you hear a lot of voices um, the program was uh, set up uh, 15 years ago really to provide a, a bridge into curating for students who most of them have had a, an art historical training but are, are keen to to progress their interests more actively in the museum and gallery sector. I should say it's not the only route into museums and galleries. Before this course was set up, uh, there was a long and honorable tradition of um, Courtauld graduates entering museum and gallery um, positions themselves. But what this does is it, is it, 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 um, it gives 12 months of, of focused, um, focused uh, learning for those who feel that this is um, a, direction that they themselves wish to pursue. Um, and when I say you know, an art historical background, it, it, is, um, it is the case that um, students come and join the course, apply for the course and join it from other disciplines as well. And they may come from uh, other humanities, lang languages, philosophy, political science, um, Arabic studies or whatever. Each year, I find um, that we have a few students whose um, earlier formation was not within art history, um, but who, for whatever reason, have developed an interest in it. Um, that always enriches the groups that we have here, um, and it works very well. I'm going to um, talk for about 25 minutes. After that, um, we will have uh, uh, an address from Taka in the admissions department, who will, uh, ans who will talk about the admissions process itself and scholarships and um, other areas. And after that, there will be a Q&A uh, for the rest of the hour, questions and answers, um, to, so that you can put to me and, and to my colleagues any, uh, any questions that you might have about the program. Great, let's get started. I'm going to talk in broad terms and then come on to the actual content of the program. So let me share my screen. So here we are, Curating the Art Museum 2023. Um, the first thing I should say is that um, the cohort of students is small. It's up to a maximum of 12 students per year. And it is a 12 month MA program, which distinguishes it again from the, the MA History of Art, which is an eight, nine month program. So it, it works on its own schedule. It has its own, um, own content, although broadly it works within the semester system that the Institute has now adopted, um, the program actually runs across the full 12 months of the year in ways that I will show you um, presently. 
it's a cross period program, which means that we accept students whose interests um, in the past and, and currently a future cover of the full range of, of historical periods. We may get classical students, we may get students interested in the Renaissance or 18th century, as well as the modern period and contemporary. Uh, this is an important uh, characteristic of the program that we teach right across the system. Um, and indeed the content of the program reflects that, that broad range. Uh, teaching is on and off site. There are of course um, conventional seminar sessions, lectures within the Institute itself and a lot, of the, a lot of the working goes on in the Institute, but it also carries on outside the Institute, across London, in museums and galleries. That may be gallery visits, it may be particular exercises that you undertake um, with curators in museums outside, and it also um, it includes, as I'll come on to say, uh, an important element of the programme, which is the individual placements. How we teach um, the learning, um, the learning process involves both group and individual working. Group working is incredibly important within this program. Uh, you will, um, curating is inherently a, a, a communal activity involving teams, involving many different players. So one of the important things about the whole learning uh, structure of the program is that you operate as a group, there's group discussions, group exercises, you adopt different roles, you, you argue and discuss with each other, and uh, the results are in that way collaborative. Um, teaching, as I say, involves faculty members and museum professionals, and the range of teaching methods and assessments is very broad. Alongside conventional seminars, there are practical exercises, um, which I will um, detail in, in a moment, there is the professional placement and various other forms of, of, of visits and um, communal activities, the most significant of which is the development of an exhibition, pro uh, an exhibition project, which you, the students, would take forward, um, a public exhibition project. Um, as I say, you know, the, the programme embraces all, all periods and interests. Um, it, it, it establishes a broad landscape, if you like, but it's not to make everyone generalists. Uh, we'd like you to continue to pursue and develop your own particular areas. What, what the programme does in its breadth is, I hope, help you to find your own particular direction and specialism, whatever it is, um, but equally you can learn as much from your peers as you can from your teachers, and that broad range of interests is, is very important in the whole learning experience. Um, so there's a lot of discussion, a lot of exercises. The, the, the ethos of the programme is very much to do with learning by doing, putting you in situations, putting you in front of work, introducing you to the spaces in which work is, introducing you to the institutions in which um, art is worked with, in, to permanent collections, to exhibitions. Um, as I say, you meet a lot of people, you meet a lot, you, and you see people operating within their own areas, um, you, meet, you, you encounter lots of different perspectives and different positions. Um, and, you know, with all this, we're not looking for a single outcome. There's no single a product from this program. You enter as different people and we hope you, you um, leave having developed your own interests and um, able to continue in whatever capacity you wish within the, the museum and gallery sector. Um, I should, I should. So um, here is the schema, if you like, of, of the whole program, which it's a complex program. It involves many different elements, all of which interrelate and lead on one from another. I hope you can make sense of this, uh, this, this diagram. Uh, it, in, and I'll walk my way through it. It shows all the separate elements of the program, and it is um, it shows the way that the year unrolls from the first semester in the autumn through to semester two in the spring, leading into Easter, and then the period after that from May through the summer. What you see here in these pale boxes, I should also say that the size of these boxes is roughly equivalent to the scale of that particular element of the program. So the smaller boxes 
um, are, are, are shorter and less intensive um, elements. The larger boxes, such as this one here, um, loom much larger and occupy more of your time. I'll take it from the top and go through each of the elements of, of the program. So in semester one, you begin with a series of sessions uh, titled History and Theory of Museums. This is um, with a, a colleague of mine, and it is to introduce you into the broad history of museums over time, but also with a very contemporary perspective, looking at how museums are now and how they relate to the way that they've been in the past, to their foundation, how they evolve, how they change, and a whole range of important issues come up there to do with access, to do with audiences, to do with um, exhibitions and permanent collections, to do with current issues like, um, like restitution or uh, so it's issues such as that. It gives you a sort of broad historical basis on which to, to move forward. At the same time here in the um, box below are contemporary approaches to the exhibition, which develop the ideas in the history and theory of museums and look at current issues to do with, um, to do with display, to do with exhibitions, um, and, and also introduce you to other voices, to curators working in the field, to artists working with institutions. There are a mixture of seminars and visits to institutions across London. And of course, we're very fortunate here, sitting in the middle of London, to have an unparalleled range of museums, galleries, exhibitions, talks, curators, artists that we can draw on for these sessions. In the second term, there's a further series of seminars, which are called Language and Interpretation, um, writing and interpretation of art, whether in collections or in exhibitions, is crucial to the whole business. Um, and we call it language and interpretation rather than writing, because, of course, there are many forms of, of language involved. Some of, um, some of them are not written to do with, um, to do with speaking, to do with audio and vid visual, uh, video interpretation of of exhibitions and displays. Um, what these sessions um, teach you to do is both to find your own voice, to acknowledge the position from what you're, which you're speaking, and involve you in a range of um, ways of using words and language from academic right through to, to public accessible language, such as you would find in press releases or exhibition labels. Down here, you have a series of four sessions in the semester one, which is about the ethics and practice of conservation. Of course, conservation is a whole field in itself. You can study it here at the Courtauld, and it will take you a, a number of years to, to do. This is a very um, quick and incisive uh, incursion into the world of conservation, particularly in, in, as, it as it relates to the world of the curator. So it's about ethics and practice, the areas in which um, conservation and curating intersect, but sometimes um, uh, even argue with each other it, uh, in order to give you just a, a, a very sort of short and incisive view into a, a parallel world, if you like. So those are the, uh, those are the talk se sessions, the, the, the seminar sessions. I'm moving on down here now to see the bottom left, the virtual display exercise. This begins at the beginning of the year, and this takes you out of the Institute into museums and galleries where you work with curators. This current year, we're working with the National Gallery and with Tate Modern. So the, the cohort of students is, is separated into two smaller groups. And each of those groups of five or six students goes to, spends time in these museums and galleries working with a curator on a particular exercise, which um, generally involves looking at a particular body of work, and a particular space and understanding the way in which this work and these spaces relate to the rest of the museum, the way that um, the museum displays its work, you're asked to um, reconsider and propose um, a, a, a way of working with works in a particular space according to a particular brief. It's called a virtual, um, virtual display exercise because it doesn't actually happen in reality, but it is an exercise in, in, in understanding the reality of museums and galleries, of the works that they have and the ways in which they can present them to the public. Um, it is, there are four sessions there. It runs through the first semester. And at the end of that, you make a presentation as a group um, of your idea. And um, that is 
received by the rest of the student body and your and the curators you've been working with and myself and other colleagues and um, uh, there is a practical criticism session at the end of it what that does is really throw you into the the deep end of what it is that museums and galleries what it is that curators do and it sets up lots of questions which are um, followed through in the language and interpretation sessions but also in the exhibition project which you yourself get to work on and develop here in the middle, as you see, um, something which comes on stream in, during the first semester, in fact, is about to come on stream very shortly for, this, for, for the current students, is the, the placement section, which is individual placements. Each student individually is, uh, is um, found a placement within a museum or gallery somewhere in London, where for one or two days a week, um, they work with a, a curator in that institution as a mentor, uh, the, the curator is a mentor to the student and you get to work on um, whatever that curator is currently engaged on it's going to be a, a large range of things it might be to do with collection display it could be to do with temporary exhibitions which are about to happen it generally involves a research element for the student um, but you get to see a lot of the way in which that museum is is operating and you get a very direct link into your your um your mentor and those experiences, as I say, are individual. Each student has a different placement in a different institution. Some institutions take more than one student, but uh, each of you has an individual mentor. And this provides you with, with incredibly valuable experience of the way that, that museums and galleries work. And it also gives you a body of experience to bring back to the rest of the student body um, for use in discussions uh, as the year progresses. That runs through till about Easter uh, and um, yeah, it, it is central to the, the whole program. Down here, um, you have the exhibition project, which is a project which students work on together as a group, um, working with public collections in a public space. This year, uh, students are working with two collections, the Arts Council collection, which is a collection um, held in London by the South Bank Centre. It's a very large collection of works um, by British artists or artists working in Britain post-war. So it's, it's, it's um, a, a collection of work over 70 years. And they're also working with the, with the Courtauld Gallery's own collection, which of course is, 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 spans across history. They're, they're asked to consider both these collections, bring them together to make an exhibition according to a, a brief, which is quite an open brief. Um, so essentially over the six month period, Students get to know the collections, they get to understand the brief, and they come up with an exhibition concept themselves, which they, they uh, over the first part of the, the, the exercise through into to about Easter. They present that to the gallery, present that to the curators, present that to teachers on the program. And then for the second part of the exercise, they develop that exhibition, that their concept into a practical exhibition, which takes place in a public space. This year it will take place in the Courtauld's own gallery. Um, following that, and about the time that the exhibition begins, students will work on, will work on a dissertation over the summer, a 10,000 word dissertation, which is very similar in kind to the dissertations that you would do if you're on the history of art. Um, MA program. Uh, they are on a very wide variety of subjects, as wide as the combined interests of all students. The, the important thing is that somehow they relate to the museum and gallery sphere, to museological questions, curating questions, but also that they are on a subject that you personally find of interest. Dissertations, as you can imagine, are a very important indicator for students themselves, but also for teachers. Uh, of, uh, of um, your suitability or capacity to engage in, in postgraduate research should you wish to take that course. Um, the, so the, the other elements of assessment are the essays you write on history and theory of the museums and contemporary approaches to the museum. There are 4,000 word essays which you write um, in the first semester and the second semester. There are various all other smaller elements there's a museum debate series in which students are um, uh, asked to come up with a subject of contemporary relevance within the museum gallery sphere or, or of curatorial interest, something which is current, which is urgent, which will interest a public. 
you come up with a concept, you find speakers from outside to talk about it, you um, construct museum debates, which are held in public, possibly online, but also uh, in real space here at the Court Hall. And, and there are two of those events which run across, across the year. There is also, although it doesn't figure here, uh, uh, an element which is called gallery talks, which um, uh, entails each student individually giving two lectures during the course of the year, short lunchtime lectures in the Court Old Gallery, 15 minute lectures on individual works of their choice before, uh, before the public, before um, people who are in the gallery. They're advertised and um, people come along at lunchtime and listen to you. So as you can see, there's a whole range of different forms of learning and also of teaching, very much learning by doing, um, talking in front of the public, talking to each other, talking to curators and to teachers um, through the course of the year. Um, that's more or less the programme as it stands. Um, we can come back to these elements in the Q&A afterwards, if you like. Um, what I would say, particularly in relation to the placements, but also the other external um, elements of the program is that um, the museum and gallery world, the context of it these days is, is um, a very challenging one. There are many issues out there, um, social, political issues, but also financial resource issues that uh, are extremely challenging to museums. And you can imagine that the period of COVID, although, although we're not quite out of it, you know, the, the really hard period of COVID entailed a degree of um, working virtual working, working online. Uh, museums and galleries across London are in common with many other workplaces working on a, in, in hybrid conditions. So uh, combining working on site um, in, in the gallery spaces with remote working and placements um, just like that would follow the way in which curators themselves work. So they would probably involve a degree of um, remote working, online working, as well as actually working in the space face to face with um, your with the colleagues in the museum. Um, that's what I would say there. Um, overall, I would say that the program is intended to be a very responsive program. It, it aims to change according to the way in which the museum and gallery world is changing. It aims to reflect the developing um, interests, current issues, priorities of curators and institutions out there in the world. It wouldn't be fit for purpose if it didn't respond. And of course, it changes year on year. It changes according to those external circumstances, according to what's uh, important out there, to new live issues. Also, it responds to the opportunities that are there in terms of um, new museums, new exhibitions, which can be visited and, um, and uh, interrogated along the way. Um, it also changes to an extent according to the interests of the student body. Um, nothing is absolutely fixed. We look to reflect those interests. And each year, I would say, having worked on this programme for a number of years, the way that the programme develops um, is in, in large part um, to do with the way in which students respond to the programme, the sorts of interests that they, they, um, they show as we go along. I think I will stop there for a moment. Uh, we, we can take questions um, shortly, but I'd like to pass over for a moment to my colleague Taka in the admissions department, who can um, speak particularly to the admissions process and any, and any um, issues that arise from, from the whole process of application. Taka, over to you for a moment. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining um, this virtual open day today. Um, I'm going to talk about application process and entry requirements and the funding options. Um, and the um, and the accommodation options um, briefly before we actually go on to um, Q and A. Um, if you've got any questions, um, you can use the um, chat function, um, which should be available at the bottom of the screen. Um, it, you can actually start asking, and then we're going to answer questions later. Okay, okay. Let's, let's. I talk. beg your pardon, Tucker. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. I'm oh, sorry. no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> Please do use the chat function as Tucker talks. Listen to Tucker, but also get, get your questions <laughs> coming so that I, I can begin to gather them and answer them. Tucker. Okay, um, okay. Um, I'm going to talk about application process. Um, applications are now open. You can start making an application by visiting our How to Apply for Postgraduate Programs page on our website. Application deadline is 12th of January 
23. Um, for this particular program, no offers will be made without interviews. Um, we only start assessing applications after the deadline. Um, applicants typically hear back on the results of applications before the end of March 2023. Um, entry requirements. Um, students will normally have achieved a good 2-1 in their bachelor's degree, considered to be an average 65% or above. Um, for overseas applicants, um, our requirements are equivalent to a GPA 3.5 or above. Um, many successful students typically achieve the degree in the humanities or related subjects. However, we welcome all applications from different academic backgrounds and we have many students who have obtained a degree from other academic backgrounds too. Um, if your first language is not English, we require proof of English language test. You may be exempt from providing English language test if you have an academic qualification equivalent to a UK bachelor's degree or a degree from a majority English speaking country. Um, funding. And we had the court order scholarships, which are able to provide financial assistance to postgraduate students. Applicants are highly, com um, sorry, applications are highly competitive and decisions are based on academic merit. And the average postgraduate um, scholarship awarded in 2022-23 academic year was about £6,000. Um, regardless of your student status, either home or overseas students, um, all MA creating the art museum applicants are eligible to apply for the court or the scholarships. For how to apply and what documents do you require, please visit our website um, and applications are normally open in early spring. Um, eligible students can apply for the postgraduate master's loan from the UK government. This loan will provide financial support of £11,836 for your postgraduate study and this fund can be used for tuition fees or living expenses. Um, accommodation. We have a number of University of London accommodation available, mostly in Bloomsbury, some catered, some studio flats. Our website will be updated in the new year to have the most up-to-date up information. We normally prioritise international students who have not lived or studied in the UK for the postgraduate accommodation. Um, if you have any questions, um, please email pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk um, and then I should be able to answer or you can actually use the chat function and to ask um, the um, ask a question now and then we, we'll be able to answer that. Okay then back to you Martin and um, shall we actually go through the um, questions? Yes well, well thank you uh, thank you Taka. Um, keep the questions coming in we'll, I'll look at them in a moment just while you're doing that let me just give you a few um, images and and um, aid memoir from from the program. Uh, I mentioned the virtual display exercises uh, at the National Gallery in Tate. This is the National Gallery space in which the um, students are, oh, sorry in which the students are working. The Barry rooms at the centre of the gallery, so they're being asked to reconfigure the the works within that space. That's the National Gallery Group, the Tate Modern Group are working in a very different space, the tanks at Tate Modern, where they are being asked to uh, con con uh, con basically construct an, an exhibition around climate emergency, which will take place in these spaces. So very different exercises, very different spaces in which they're working. This is uh, just a list of the institutions which we habitually work with um, for placements. As you can see, it's, it's a very large range of institutions across London from the large national museums such as Tate Modern, the National Gallery, Tate Britain and the National Portrait Gallery, right through to historic um, collections such as Dulwich Picture Gallery, to um, exhibition spaces like the Barbican and the Hayward and various others um, including the Courtauld Gallery itself and institutions such as the Science Museum and uh, which, which um, work with art alongside other forms of, of work. 
So it's a great range and we're constantly um, expanding or changing that list as we go along. I'll just give you a couple of images of past exhibitions that the students have constructed. This was uh, an exhibition called Falling Up, Gravity and Art, uh, at, which was staged at the Courtauld Gallery and included works uh, from the Courtauld Collection, as similarly to this year, and contemporary works. What you see suspended in the front is a work by the, the artist Cornelia Parker, who's just had a major exhibition at Tate Britain called The Last of England. And this was juxtaposed with a, a deposition, uh, a painting of the de deposition, Christ coming off the cross by Rubens. It was the central juxtaposition between the two, um, between the two collections. Um, another example uh, was an exhibition which looked at um, an expanded definition of printmaking over time in contemporary art. You see works here by Anna Barrable and Richard Long. This is also in the Courtauld Gallery. An exhibition called There, Not There, which was in the gallery's own exhibition spaces three years ago. One of my students interpreting work by Lubaina Himid, which was in the exhibition. Um, another exhibition, this was um, an online exhibition during the COVID period in which uh, students worked with the same collections but developed a, a, a really interesting um, and um, ambitious and complex online exhibition, which included a lot of um, audiovisual material and sound, sound and audiovisual interviews with artists. And last year's exhibition, which also took place outside the Courtauld while the Courtauld was, was um, closed and beginning to reopen, working with the collection of the uh, internationally renowned architect Zaha Hadid. Zaha's work is all um, gathered in a, a new foundation quite close to the Courtauld, where the, where, when the students were the first um, curators ever to have access to that collection, they made an exhibition of Hadid's um, London projects over time. This is the poster, and that's an installation picture of the exhibition space, which is a space that we refurbished for exhibition during the, the period in which we're working on the show. I mentioned dissertations. Here's a list of dissertations for you. I won't go through them, but it just shows the, the range um, of, uh, there's a totally random list from previous years, the range of different um, types of subject which students have engaged on over time. There's students on a, on a study trip to Europe a few years ago in Dresden, in the Albertina Museum, um, a rare moment of relaxation in an intensive year. Um, I mentioned that there's no single outcome for, for graduates from the program. So this is a range of types of um, situation in which students graduating from the program go into afterwards. Obviously, public museums and galleries in a whole range of different capacities, whether as curators or as education, educators, collections managers, or in different departments of the museum. Equally, private galleries, auction houses, universities, if they wish to carry on with, with um, uh, postdoctoral research, um, arts organizations more broadly, publishing, consultancy, management, and freelance work, in independent work. So a great range of different um, directions in which graduates go. We keep very close, or I keep very close um, uh, touch with, with um, graduates as they progress in their careers. Um, and we have 15 years of graduates now. <laughs> and here's, here's just, again, a similarly random list of positions in which they find themselves or have found themselves in the past. Um, in a variety of capacities across the world, in museums and galleries of different sizes, and indeed in, in, in other um, institutions. And I would say that of, of the 170 graduates that we have had on this programme, I would say that about 85 to 90% of them are currently employed in various capacities across the sector, which I think is a very healthy result for the programme, very reassuring and, and indeed satisfying result. Here's a list of institutions in which um, uh, graduates of the program um, have worked or are currently working. The list could go on, it, it, it can be longer than that. But it just gives the impression of, of the range of um, places that um, this program can lead you. Finally, there's happy graduates um, on the eve of their public exhibition opening in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the courtyard of Somerset House 
it's not just a happy picture, but it, it's to reinforce the point that I think I'd made already that um, students here work as a group. Um, it can be an old cliche, but it is very true. And any graduates would tell you that um, the students on this program learn as much, if not more, from each other, from their varied interests, their varied contributions, um, as they do from, from the teachers, the many teachers that they will meet on that program. So there we are, we're back to the, the schema and um, let us um, look at um, questions that have been coming in. Um, shall, I, um, shall, I leave the, um, shall I leave the screen up or shall I take it down? Um, I think you can just leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, hold on. Is, is this all right? Uh, Hang on. Let, let me let me stop sharing for a moment. I'll okay. go back to the schema in a, in a minute, so that I can uh, look open at the questions which are coming through. Um, I'll take them in any old order, but I'll take them uh, as they came. Is there uh, other examples of past dissertations that we can see before or after admissions, um, just to see positive examples of curatorial writing? Um, well, I gave you uh, uh, there uh, after this question came in a list of titles. Um, I, I believe that um, these, these dissertations are logged in the Courtauld Library, um, but they are online. Uh, I'm not sure the extent to which they are available for, for um, people outside the Courtauld to, to access, but I, I believe they would be on, on request. Yeah, they should be. Um, I think anybody um, who wanted to access the um, dissertation, past dissertations, um, um, they need to submit um, a particular form, um, but um, if you actually uh, search um, book library um, on our website, um, there's a section um, for that service, um, and um, I think they they've got all dissertations since 2017, which is when they started uh, being digitized. Yeah, yeah, which should give you a, a very decent. That's five years of dissertations. That's a good sixty dissertations, and um, certainly the li library staff know where to find them and will be able to help you should you be interested in that. I've got a question here uh, from someone who um, has been studying classical literature and civilization at undergraduate level, and their 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 their, their, their question is that whether this I think specific. Um, area that they have um, been working in would uh, in any way pose a challenge in terms of cross period expertise and working. Um, this is about classical literature, but I bet there are others of you out there who are wondering the same sort of thing. Um, you know, is, is my period of date, will it will allow me to get to this program? Um, uh, sufficient. The answer is, I would say yes, and the program is cross period. It, it is not expecting everyone to have cross period knowledge. Um, it, it, it asks you to come with what experiences you have and to bring those experiences to bear on more general um, discussion. Uh, it is useful, I would say, to have some element of art historical knowledge. Many people, if they haven't been studying art history per se, may have crossed over into uh, visual studies in in their in working with other disciplines, be they languages or or history or or English or or whatever, um, that's often the case. I find that 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 students have have worked on you know modules or elements within other disciplines that have um, spurred their interest in in art history, and that has led them to want to cross over into this other field. It can be a challenge, but but but. Um, I would say that it is absolutely no bar to to um, applying for this course if, if if that's where your interests lie. Obviously, the more you can do to increase your art historical knowledge before you come, um, the better the better um, the situated you will be. But just to reiterate this point, everyone comes with their specific knowledge. There's a lot more to learn. We can't teach art history itself on this program, but you, you, but you come into contact with a lot of art history along the way. There will be learning curves for you there. Um, and um, you know, it, it, it is an intensive program in that way. And the individual placements would, would, would expect you to, to have you know, coordinates within art history to an extent. But as I say, each year there are you know, maybe two, maybe three students who come from a background other than art history. And often they, they are some of the most stimulating students in the group, bringing those different perspectives to bear. Um, I hope that answers that question. 
question, and, and I'm sure, as I say, there are others who would um, uh, be asking similar questions. I have a question here. Would you would you um, suggest applying straight after undergrad or taking a, a gap to work in internships or get some experience before applying? I think this is a broad general question, and, and I think I can see other questions relating to it as well. Um, am I expected to have um, ex experience uh, of working in galleries and music or museums in whatever way? Some of you will, particularly those of you in art history. Others may have um, done so even if you haven't been studying art history because of your particular interest. Um, others will not have worked in museums or galleries at all, whether as volunteers or in internships or placements. Um, obviously, if you can, uh, that can only stand you in good stead. Um, there may still be time to do so but, but, you know, over, over the course of the next year. Um, in any year, I would say you know, the majority of students come direct from graduating from their BA programmes. Um, equally, they may have taken a year out. They may indeed have um, gathered experience from museums and galleries. It tends not to be more than a year um, after um, graduation, but in some cases it could be two or three years. Um, if you have expertise, if you have those interests, if you have been developing them, that, that obviously is, is important. It strengthens your case and it, and it gives you more, more experience to draw on when you do come to the program. But I, I'm not looking here to set up fences or, or put obstacles in, in your way. If you can get that experience, do. If you can't get experience working in galleries or museums, get out and visit them, see them, get, you know, build up your, your, your level of knowledge and experience just so far as you can, wherever you are. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that answers that one. Um, there's a question here relating to the curriculum and particularly to placements, the individual placements. The question is, is this just a mentorship or is there an assessment feedback from your mentor at the end? Placements are very general experience. Uh, they're good experience. They're, they're individual experience. The, the, um, the, the relationship between the student and, and your mentor is, of course, very important. It's a human one, and, and it, it, they work in different ways, but it, it is an important element of it, not just learning about the museum, getting to work on research tasks or more practical tasks, but that relationship you know, can, can really make a placement. And in many cases, it is, it is highly significant. At the end of the placement period, you, the student, are asked to write a self-reflective report of about 1,500 words short, in which you talk about what the work you've done, what you've learned from it, the observations you have about the museum or gallery in which you were placed. And that um, self-reflective report, it helps us understand the way the placements have gone. It also helps your mentor, who is asked to comment on that self-reflective report and give their own comments on, on, on your performance. It is a formal requirement of the program that the replacement satisfactorily, but it's not in any sense an exam. Um, it, it's, it's designed to give feedback to you, but also to, to us uh, who are running the placement scheme as part of the, the exhibition. Um, and in practice, those who, who complete the placement, I mean, I, I haven't had um, instances of unsatisfactory performance. I think if performance were a, a difficulty in itself, I think we would know much earlier on and, and, and work out what to do about that. Um, I hope that answers that. Um, I've got a question. Of, is it possible for students to, to um, make connections with other institutions, which I didn't show on that list? Um, uh, you know, to, to, to work in other institutions. I would say we're always on the lookout for other, for, there are obviously um, museums and galleries that we work with regularly, not every year, but regularly, but we're always on the lookout for, for other, other in which we can put placements. So yes, you know, um, I, I, you know I, ideas, proposals are, are, are received well. And what I would say is that um, it's a complex, it's a complex uh, business setting up placements and it is, down to down to me as the head of program really to broker these placements i would i would um, look at uh, other alternatives but it's not um it's it's not a sort of bespoke thing in which you say yes i want to work here or there um and uh, or equally we wouldn't encourage you to say yes i would love to come on this program in order to work at x y or z museum i have to find uh, enough 
opportunities out there, or good opportunities to, to satisfy the student numbers. And then, and, and, and obviously I, I'm interested in your interest, your, your experience of what you want out of placements in general. But in the end, I, I affect what I believe to be the best um, division of those opportunities as, as they come each year in discussion with you, the students. Um, this is a more general and, and um, open-ended question. In addition to academic performance, what specifically are you looking for in the application? In other words, what sets successful students apart? Good question. Um, uh, difficult to answer. Um, I obviously got ideas about what I think a, a good student is. Um, obviously, this is the courthold. Academic performance in itself is important, as, as um, indicated by your references, by the written work which you submit, and, and by the qualifications which you will have got already. Over and above that, of course, I'm looking for real interest, a proven interest if possible, but, but stated interest in, um, in developing your expertise in the professional field of museums and galleries. And that interest you can indicate in many ways. It might be about you know, the sorts of things that you've done if you have worked within museums and galleries, um, but also you know, just the way that you present yourself, explain what it is that really fires you to consider this. Ultimately, I guess I'm looking for what I would call teachability. I'm looking for students who I feel um, I can teach, who really want to learn, you know, who in a way exhibit a sort of hunger for, for the programme and what the programme involves. It's a tough old world out there curating, as I said. Um, it, it, it's an energetic world. Um, it's, it, it, it's a competitive world. And I, I think I'm looking for people who really want to embrace that and show to me that they have the enthusiasm, the commitment, um, you know, and the the energy and the the smartness really to to take that on. That's a pretty broad answer to what is a very broad question, but I hope in some way it it, it answers um, what what you're you're asking. Um, uh, another, you know, possibly unanswerable question: What are the benefits of studying for a master's on curating over a general art history master's for a career in curating? Um, so in court old terms, I think you're, you're, you're evaluating you know, whether, whether this specific curating program, how that sits against um, an art history masters. As I said right at the beginning, curating program is not the only route through to museums and galleries. Before this program is set up, um, many, many graduates from the art history um, courses, myself included back in the day, um, went into museums and galleries from, from art history itself. Um, they're not competitive. They're different, different routes through. I just think what, what we believe the curating program gives is this focused, um, focused program, which really helps people see that bridge across from art history as a discipline to curating as a profession um, over this 12 months in this broad landscape with, with you know, really focusing on the institutions, the people who work in them, the issues that they deal with, and the exercises that we feel are analogous and fit you to. Um, it's not to take away from the value of, you know, art historical specialism, some of which you may have, some of which you may develop in time. They're parallel routes, and I think ultimately, if you're really assessing the the relative you know, merits and um, worth of, of these two programmes, you just have to explore them um, both in tandem together. And if you feel um, energetic enough to apply for them both and see, see what that tells you of those two programmes. Um, So uh, another question, how much support is there for students looking for placements as part of the course? I just, I want to cap that one off by saying, we look for on your behalf. We listen to your interests, but it is up to us to find those opportunities and to put them to you. Um, a question, how many people apply each year on average? Um, I think Taco has already said this is a competitive program. I can't say specifically how it, um, how it um, compares with other programs that we run at the Courtauld. But I would say that we have, in general, most years, in excess of 100 applicants for the 12 places. 
which may sound daunting, but in no way is to put you off. Um, you know, it, we do take 12 students a year and um, I would you know, encourage you to put set numbers aside and just think how, how much do I want this? How can I best um, present myself and explain what it is that I've done, what I want to do and, and what I want to get out of the program? Um, Okay. I'm just looking back, scrolling back to see whether there are other questions that I can raise. There's a new one. Where, Taka, can you see anything else that I should be um, focusing on? Is it frowned upon to reapply if you don't don't get in at first? Is it frowned upon to reapply if you don't get in at first? Um, Answer, of course, it's not frowned upon. It can, it, it can be um, an expression of your commitment. Um, I, I should say about the, uh, the, um, the application process, in fact, the formal process, I, I, I would not accept students on this programme with having... Sorry to butt in, Martin, you see you're breaking up a little bit. So you Sorry. might... Yeah. So you might... You might I beg want... your pardon, am I now back? in the room I, I can hear you now but just, um, okay. you might want to just re repeat um what you said yeah um, sorry this was a question of whether whether you can apply more than once for this program i was saying that um, i i regard it as important for this program to interview applicants before um, giving them places i wouldn't uh, accept people on the program unless i had interviewed them um, if you are interviewed but don't get a place i, I would hope that you would um, have at least got interesting experience from the interview sufficient to allow yourself to think, well, would I like to reapply next year? Are there ways in which I could strengthen my, my application? Um, and um, I would say in practice, yes, I have taken students who have uh, applied previously and not been successful. Um, uh, it's, it, it can show fixity of purpose, it can show ambition, it can show real commitment. Um, but I would say that those students who maybe weren't successful one year. Martin, you... Having gained more experience. Martin, sorry, just about 20 seconds you're gone. So... Um... Can you hear me now? I can now, <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Um... But it was, it was just the last bit. Yes, okay. Yeah. No, I think what I was saying, if you do reapply uh, uh, a year after not being successful the first year, I would expect you to be replying in a way, as a, a, reapplying as a different person with more experience. And you, you, would get, you would have a year to really think about how might I strengthen my application. Okay. Do you have other questions? It's not too late to put in a question if, if, you, if you wish to do so. Yeah. Um, I just in in terms of I mean I'm, I'm I'm inventing a question here which I know has come up and it came up in our on-site um, uh, open day last week. What sort of writing should I submit in support of my application? Um, and the answer to that I would say was the writing which you feel best represents you and your own qualities, your own expertise. If that writing happens to be on a curatorial subject. That's great. It, it, it could be more broadly art historical discipline or something unrelated to curatorial matters. Um, what I look at is the quality of the writing, not necessarily the, the closeness of the subject to what we uh, ourselves approach in the curatorial program. If it's within the field, great. If it's not within the field, I hope it's good writing and displays your qualities and your interests in, in um, but also your abilities to, to think and articulate um, views and to express yourself well. That's what I'm looking for there. And I, uh, just another point in terms of applications, you know, it, references are important. I mean, do, do spend time to find references, to find references from people who you feel um, are best qualified um, to present your, your own strengths and do work on those people to really um, to really concentrate on, on your references. It's very important to, to do that in support of your application. 
um, I'm getting a question about uh, an intended submission for the written work, which is over 5,000 word limit. Is it all right to submit a sample of it? Yes, of course, you, 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 you can do my job for me by choosing which bit of, of that longer piece you would wish me to, to read. It can be a chapter from something more. I don't need the whole context. I'm not going to read 5,000 words of, of anyone's um, dissertation, unfortunately. I'd love to, I'm sure they're fascinating, but time precludes that. But I think if you, if you, if you um, give me a section of it, a chapter or, or whatever, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite um, expert at, at forming the right opinions from, from a section of that work. Um, can the writing be of any type of piece or does it have to be an essay? Um, um, that... should, I, should I answer that? Um, I did actually answer to uh, one of the questions um, previously. Um, I would actually say um, um, we assess um, academic writing skills. So I would actually say just an example of academic um, writing, like the academic essay, dissertations or thesis, um, not the sort of um, other type of writing. I think that would be the appropriate um, sample. Would you say that, Matt? I, I would agree with you, Taka. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the formal writing that you do on this programme is, you know, it, it, it conforms to academic um, expectations and standards. So it is easier for us to form an opinion if what you submit is, is, is a piece of academic writing. It's not so easy for us to read, um, uh, say, journal writing. Good, maybe it, it, we can't in the same clear way uh, form an opinion of how that how that speaks to your 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 academic abilities i would say that every form of writing is equally valid in general and and on this program you you know you, you get to to write in a lot of different ways they may be journalistic they may be creative at times but i think what we're looking for here is is a way of of, of best assessing your your ability to 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 write according to academic format and standards right are there any more questions? Um, we're, we're on the hour here, Taka, so yep. um, uh, I, I think we're probably there. Um, yep. Is there anything else you'd like to say about follow-up um, questions, Taka? Um, just want to say, um, if you've got more questions, please um, feel free to write to me um, by email. Um, I posted uh, my email address on here. It's pgadmissions at uk. Um, you can just ask me anything um, and I'll just um, try my best to um, answer that question as soon as possible. Um, and that's all from me, Martin. Thank you, Taka. I will just say one last thing. Um, if you are able to get hold of any current or, or, or past students on this programme, obviously through whatever ways that you, you, um, you can think of, and I'm not quite sure what they are, obviously you will learn um, a great deal from them and, and, and they may well be willing to, to give you the benefit of their experience and to tell you how the programme was for them, which is in many ways much more important than, than me telling you how it would be for you. So I, I can't broker this, I mean I can't, I can't take a million requests to, uh, to pass on um, the details, but I know from previous years that it, there are ways of doing this and those students who do manage to tap into current or, or past uh, students on the programme find uh, can get very good advice and information from them. Otherwise, yeah, I would, I would encourage you to apply and, and if you can do now and, and um, the, you know, the, the, the rest of the applications process, thinking about museums and galleries, visiting museums and galleries, thinking about um, what, you know, what, what you would hope to get out of a program like this and um, just really preparing yourself. So I encourage you to apply and, and think, you know, what is, what is it that we could teach you? Thank you all, that's been a good hour. I hope that it's been useful for you and I hope that we've answered at least um, some of your, your, your many questions. Um, I look forward to reading your applications if you're so minded to do that and I hope to seeing some of you in, in person and I would hope um, to teaching to teaching some of you next year. Thank you all very much. Thank you.